We're continuing. Prahladananda Maharaj is speaking this verse for a few days now, covering the preliminary, or really the initial statements by Prahlad Maharaj. Uh, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasavanam, and uh, now we are, no, Padasavanam is today, so, okay. So we'll read the verse again, <laughs> two verses actually. Shri Parada Uvacha Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smartam Pada Sevanam Archanam Bandanam Dasyam Sakyamatman Nivedanam Iti Pumsar Pitam Vishnu Bhaktis Chaitnava Lakshana Kriyate Bhagavatad Adhya Tanmanye Dititam Uttamam Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam Sri Parada Uvacha Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smartam Pada Sevanam Archanam Bandanam Dasyam Sakya Atman Nivedanam Iti Pumsar Pito Vishnu Bhaktis Chena Valakshana Kriyate Bhagavat Adhya Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam Sri Parada Uvacha Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smartam Pada Sevanam Archanam Bandanam Dasyam Sakya Atman Nivedanam Iti Pum Sarpita Vishnu Bhakti Shaynava Lakshana Kriyate Bhagavad Adha Tanmanye Ditam Uttamam Thank 
Okay, anyone else? Sri Parada Uvacha. Prahlad Maharaj said, <coughs> Shravanam, hearing, Kirtanam, chanting, Vishnu, of Lord Vishnu, not anyone else, Smaranam, remembering, Padasevanam, serving the feet, Archanam, offering worship, with Soda Sapachara, the sixteen kinds of paraphernalia, Vandanam, offering prayers, Dasyam, becoming the servant, Sakyam, becoming the best friend, Atmanivedanam, surrendering everything, whatever one has. E.T., thus, Pumsam, Arpita, offered by the devotee, Vishnu, unto Lord Vishnu, not to anyone else, Bhakti, devotional service, Chet, if, Navalakshanam, possessing nine different processes, Kriyata, one should perform Bhagavati unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Adya, directly or completely. Tat, that. Madhye, I consider. Aditam, learning. Uttamam, topmost. Mm -hmm. Translation. Prahlad Maharaj said, now he's responding to his father's questions about what he learned in school, and Prahlad Maharaj is rejecting his teacher's teaching and giving his real teacher's teaching, which is Narada Muni. So he's not answering his father's question directly, he's answering what actually is knowledge or what is, what is real learning which came from his spiritual master, Narada Muni, and not from Shanda and Amarka. Pallad Maharaj said, Hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, quality, paraffin, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, Considering the Lord's one best friend and surrendering everything to him, unto him, in other words, serving him with body, mind, and words, these nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. Okay, so we go right to the... Padasevanam, or do we read? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're going to, Maharaj has covered, I guess, up until, which is six full pages practically. So we're getting on to now Padasevanam. We've done Shravanam, Kirtanam, and Smarnam. So here's number four. According to one's taste and strength, hearing, chanting, remembering may be followed by Padasevanam. One attains the perfection of remembering when one constantly thinks of the lotus feet of the Lord. So here's a nice point. 
Think about this. One obtains the perfection of remembering when one constantly thinks of the lotus feet of the Lord. Being intensely attached to thinking of the Lord's lotus feet is called padasevanam. When one is particularly adherent to the process of padasevanam, this process gradually includes other processes such as seeing the form of the Lord, touching the form of the Lord, circulating the form of the form or temple of the Lord, visiting such places as Jagannath Puri, Dwarka and Mathura to see the Lord's form and bathing in the Ganga and Jamuna. Bathing in the Ganga and serving a pure Vaishnava are also known as Tidiya Upasanam. This is also Parasevanam. The word Tidiya means in relationship with the Lord. Service to the Vaishnavas, Tulasi, Ganga and Jamuna are included in Padasevana. All these processes are Padasevana, help one to advance in spiritual life very quickly. Hmm. Om timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhistam staptitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kidammayam dadati swam padanti kam Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pasyatyare Sitarine Vanchakalpa Thrubascha Kripa Sindhu Pye Bacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Dham Dham Hare Hare hmm. So just to make a few points regarding the translation the word Ada a D D H A and the Vishwanar Chakravarti Pakur gives a little purport on that word, or an explanation actually. And he says this word Ada means not karma or not gyan. In other words, as Prabhupada makes the point only to Vishnu, he says that no other deity. So this is what the, actually this whole verse means because it is misinterpreted by a lot of others who read Bhagavatam, who, who practice spirituality, that these things can be done for other deities. In other words, uh, <clears throat> those who are not Vishnu Tattva, and so, such as Shiva, or, you know, or, uh, who would have held Brahma, or Ganesh. In other words, the deities that people worship in different ways that are below Vishnu Tattva, they also apply these nine processes. But Prabhupada makes the point Vishnu and Vishnu, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur clarifies it that not karma, not jnana, not yoga, nothing. It's just only bhakti, and bhakti is only to Vishnu or Krishna. So here it's mentioned Padasevana. Also, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, when he actually gives Prabhupada's uh, translation of the actual word um, uh, Padasevana is different than Vishwanar Chakravarti's. Vishwanar Chakravarti says that Prahlad Maharaj said, when he said Padasevana means menial service. So you can see actually it's synonymous with serving the lotus feet or becoming a menial servant, which is what we say, synonymous with you know, taking shelter of the feet of the Lord because the feet of the Lord indicates pure devotional service. It indicates surrender. It indicates bhakti. So the feet of the Lord are very significant. And therefore here, as the conclusion from the previous verse, we see that uh, smartam, which is actually the goal of Krishna consciousness, goal, the goal of Krishna consciousness is smartam, really, to remember Krishna always, uh, to remember our relationship with Krishna and to act in that relationship. 
So smarnam really stands out amongst the processes because hearing, chanting leads to smarnam and smarnam. When smarnam has five stages of its existence, that means from certain levels of uh, remembrance finally becomes more concentrated until it reaches um, samadhi. So we understand that samadhi means to be fully absorbed without any other consciousness on into the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service. And that's samadhi. And so here, Pada Sevanam actually somewhat cements or fortifies or gives that, uh, that uh, smarnam a complete, clear picture. And here it's described that how, it's, uh, how it manifests in terms of the objects that one may focus on. So part of Sevanam also means, you know, worshiping the Lord, pure representative. This is also interesting here. There's that famous verse by Lord Shiva. I can't remember the verse, but he speak, huh? Aradhanam sarveshan Vishnu Aranam Padam Tadinam Tadinam Samarchanam, yeah. That means that he's speaking, he's saying that the highest form of worship is the worship of the Supreme Lord of Vishnu. But higher than that is Tadiyana. Tadiyana means anything in relationship to the Lord in the pure sense. So those who worship Tulsi, Ganga, here it's Mana, Jamuna, and the, the, the pure Vaishnavas are also practicing the highest form of bhakti in the sense that these things are very dear to the Lord. And the Lord gives that understanding himself that those who worship me by worshiping these personalities, such as the devotees, uh, you know, Tulsi Devi, uh, the spiritual master, that worship is perfect. That worship is the highest. Krishna puts himself second in regards to accepting worship. He's more pleased when we worship the Lord, the, those in relationship to him. And then the whole idea is to please the Lord. So this Tadiyanam is very interesting because it says, Prabhupada says, by this, by this one can advance very, he uses the word quickly. Sometimes devotees think, well, you know, I want to make some fast progress. <laughs> You know, I'm going along in my Krishna consciousness and I'm just struggling. Well, where can I really put my time, energy, and attention? So here it is, it explains, serve the pure devotees, serve Tulsi Devi with love, with attention, with, 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 with proper paraphernalia. Um, serve Ganga, how do we serve Ganga Devi? Ganga Devi is so merciful, right? What do you do to Ganga Devi? You go to Ganga, right? You pick up the Ganga water and you offer there's some mantras for Ganga Devi, and you pour Ganga Devi back into Ganga Devi, and that's Ganga worship, right? So it's so the process it's so simple. That's that. Now you speak about mercy. Nothing complicated. Very simple. So, and, but, it also has great spiritual benefit because Ganga Devi, Jamuna Devi are very, very dear to the Lord. So those you, if you're serving those who are extremely dear to the Lord, then you know this is the best form of service. Of course, we, everything ultimately is offered to the Lord, but when we serve those who are in, and please not only serve, but please those who are in relationship to the Lord, and uh, that, as Krishna says in the Adi Purana, those who say he, they're my devotees are not my devotees. Wow. We say, well, I'm a devotee of Krishna. Krishna says, no, you're not. <laughs> if you're a devotee of his devotee, then you are actually his devotee. He wants to make it clear that his love for his devotees, his, his per servants who have given everything for him, is more important than serving him directly or trying to serve him directly. So this Padasevanam is nice. Here it also mentions another indication of Padasevanam, visiting holy places such as Jagannath Puri, 
Dwarka and Mathura are mentioned here. We can also say Mayapur Dham, Vrindavan Dham, or maybe even Hardwar, some of the outstanding holy places that are considered to be the most powerful. So this is another, and Prabhupada makes this point in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says devotees should regularly visit holy places as a regular form of devotional service. Uh, he exclusively, well not exclusively, but he points to Sri Mayapur Dham as being our home. <laughs> he said, and Prabhupada made an interesting statement, it's kind of humorous, but at the same time it has a very powerful message. He was in Alachua, Florida, you know, it's one of the biggest, uh, what we say, Vaishnav communities in the Western world. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of devotees that are in that area. So Prabhupada's there. Of course, at that time, there wasn't so many. And Prabhupada said, here we are in Alachua, huh? Gainesville. He said Gainesville, right? I'm sorry. Which is like two sisters in the same house. Here we are in Gainesville, Florida, so far away from Sri Mayapur, the center of the world. <laughs> So he gave us an indication, where is the world center, not, you know, uh, you know Washington, D.C. or Ljubljana. But it's actually, you know, the, and he says, this is our home, Sri Mayapur. And Prabhupada actually made it a statement where he said, we should visit Sri Mayapur at least for eight days every year during the Gaur Purnima ceremony, specifically at that time, which is the time to celebrate the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we, we celebrate our new year as the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. People celebrate New Year's sometimes as, you know, the first of the year, January 1, where else they, sometimes they celebrate as Vasant Panchami, the first day of spring in India. And sometimes Vaishnavas also see it as Janmastami. But we as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we put Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu foremost in our worship. So everything about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu becomes, well, becomes glorifiable, or relishable, or worshipable. So to take advantage of holy places, devotees should every year visit Sri Mayapur. Uh, at least, in Prabhupada says, at least for eight days. <laughs> Why he picked eight days, we don't know. Maybe somebody knows, but he wanted to make a point, stay there for a while, become absorbed in the atmosphere. Because when you visit the holy places, they're none different than the Lord. The Lord's pastimes are there, and there's there's Karmastan, there's Janmastan, both there. And so we can take great, we, just by going there, it has tremendous spiritual benefit. Sometimes I feel a little unhappy when I find out devotees have never been to holy places for whatever reason, because it's really a major part of our practice in Krishna consciousness. So this falls under the one of the nine angas and in Pada Sevanam. And so the devotees see this as an opportunity to to express that anga of devotion by visiting holy places and worshiping these great personalities such as Tulsi Devi, Guru, uh, to, uh, the Vaishnavas, of course, it's mentioned also. So this is one of the more important angas in devotional service. So any comments or questions about uh, Padasevada? I can go on to the next one, but I just want to, before we do, see if there's anything in relationship to this particular anga. Question? Yeah? No? Yeah. And, okay. Uh, the, uh, I mean, this this kind of service is uh, especially relevant, probably for us who, uh, I mean, at least for me, uh, I, I, I'm a, 
I want to do something for the Lord, but I'm not so eager to be mentally in contact with Him all the time. I mean, I'm not capable. So how is with that? Uh, how is how should we uh, <coughs> how should we notice our progress and uh, try to change our internal behavior? Uh, and how do you, how do you notice your progress when you're becoming happy? If you're happy, you're just a good indication you're making advancement in devotional service. If you're not happy, then you're in Maya. <laughs> Prabhupada made that clear. You can start feeling a kind of a freedom from the anxieties that were always there previously. The devotee becomes more, he feels happy within. And that's an indication one is making progress. And one is eager to serve. That's an indic another indication of one is making progress. Eager to chant, eager to serve, eager to associate with devotees. These are all indications of progress in devotional service. And then there was another part to your question, which was... Well, you, you mean you're more interested in doing active service. Is that what you're saying? Like, as opposed to chanting and reading, you're more inclined to performing some practical activity, like working for Krishna in different ways, right? Is that the basic point of your question? Yeah, yeah. that's all right, because that's mentioned. Um, Suhotra Maharaj did this book called... Uh, Vedanta psychology, and he very carefully analyzed that there are different types of devotees, and the inclination for the activities in devotional service are based on a certain psychological nature, and that psychological nature is part of our, well, obviously it's our karma also. So and then that tendency, but therefore no one is exempt from devotional service because everyone can do something to serve the Lord. Jai, she see panchatattva ki jai. But, but in this nine processes of devotional service, you'll find that there's one thing you must do. <laughs> Even if you do, you know, if you don't do so much in terms of the formal worship part, you can and you have to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> that, ha that is f foundational. That is not what we say optional. Because Prabhupada makes that point here that um, uh, all of the other eight processes must be accompanied by the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So if you do, if you're chanting the holy names of the Lord and you're eager to do some kind of practical service for Krishna, such as cleaning the temple or fixing the vehicles or repairing the, you know, doing some construction, whatever, that's devotional service. Yeah. We can engage these propensities. That's fine, but you gotta chant. <laughs> that we can't neglect, <laughs> or it's not optional. Chanting has to be there. <laughs> because it's the Yuga Dharma. It's the means for self-realization in this age. I was in uh, one temple, it's in Germany, I was visiting many years ago. And uh, the temple president, this was back in the early part of the century, uh, very early part, he called me in, he had a concern. And he said, uh, Maharaj, I gotta ask you some questions, I have a problem. We have a wonderful Prajari. She loves to, to take care of the deities. She's very, on, not only on time, she comes early, prepares everything nicely. She's very creative in the way she worships the deities. She loves her service, but she won't chant Hare Krishna. 
And she says that it says that there are nine processes and each one of the processes are equal because that's also mentioned. That anyone can become perfect in, in devotional service simply by excelling in one of the nine processes. So she uses that as a reason for not chanting. But she's great when it comes to deity worship. So what do I do? <laughs> well, I thought about it. I thought, well, we want it. We want to. We don't want to push her out by becoming what we say really heavy with her, that she has to chant. I said, just try to encourage her every once in a while to chant. Let her go on with her service. But after a while, it'll be obvious that if she doesn't chant, she won't be able to continue, because. She's trying to serve the Lord, but she, she's failed to serve the Lord's pure devotee who is telling us to chant. So her service to the Lord is not really going to the Lord because the Lord is not accepting that service based on until she actually serves the pure devotee. And as the pure devotee says, my number one instructions to my devotees is that they must chant 16 rounds on beads every day without fail. When Prabhupada was asked what is his most important instruction. So we have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. You can't jump over and expect it to serve the Lord directly. So I said, don't, you know, kind of, you know, be nice to her, let her continue her service, but try to encourage her every once in a while to chant. So after a couple of months, I had to return to the place and he's, he said, Maharaj, she's gone. <laughs> and then he said, well, I didn't say anything. I didn't push her out, but she just gave up her service automatically. In other words, Krishna pushed her out. <laughs> so we have to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's foundational. And we have to make, and we have to try to chant in such a way as that we make progress in our chanting. Not simply to chant, but to chant with what we say, attention, devotion, avoiding the ten offenses carefully. These have to be done. <laughs> but then, if you're doing other services, that's wonderful. The temple will be very much appreciated. The Vaishnavas will be very much happy. It's always nice when somebody likes to do the work, the handiwork around the temple. And so much of that is needed. Is that okay? Okay, anything else on Padasevanam or related? Okay, should we go on? Is it? It's getting about 22, 7, 18 minutes to 9. I can stop here because Padasevan, I mean, I'm not sorry, Archanam is the next one and it's quite long. It actually takes up. Uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> it's really long. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's for tomorrow. Okay, so um, this, this verse and the purport. I would highly suggest devotees to read it, study it, and you'll learn everything about all the intricacies of the practice of devotional service. Prabhupada puts a lot of details and, under and explanations in this particular purport, and it's obviously it is the longest purport in Srimad Bhagavatam, something like 14 pages or something. Okay, thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srimad Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.